Welcome back to Cards and Comics. Today I want to talk about Mike Baker Authentics, the little sticker you see on graded cards sometimes, and sort of what is it? What does the Mike Baker sticker mean? And does it provide value to the collectors? So I compared some prices, uh, did some mathematics, and we'll get into that here in a minute. Uh, but first I want to go through why I'm even talking about Mike Baker, sort of who Mike Baker is, was relevancy to the hobby back in the day, and just sort of a, a, a reality check on who we're trusting here. So let's start here with this article from Collectible. And in the article, they're interviewing Marshall Fogel, who's on the worldwide tour of his collection, um, assuming you know he wants it to be sold, um, he talks actually about in this article about wanting someone to buy it in its totality to keep it together. But anyway, in this article, he talks about the 52 mantle. And then he says, mine is the number one of all the cards, his 52 mantle. Mike Baker, who runs NBA authentication, certified the greeting of four of the nines and three of the tens to determine if the card is better than the grade. Now, Mike Baker was a former head grader for PSA. So what I'm assuming he's saying here is that back in the day, Mike Baker was one of the graders who graded some of these cards to begin with. Or that he looked at them somehow from other owners, which doesn't make sense. So I'm assuming they're meaning that he has looked at all these cards because he graded some of them, or he had some to compare, which seems weird, but maybe that's what they did and determined that he had the highest black diamond label in the color, the condition, the centering, that Mike Baker named it one of the, the Holy Grail in the Mona Lisa of 52 mantles. Okay. So, um, you know, that's interesting because he's really putting a lot of stock into the Mike Baker opinion. Now, if you go to the recent um, interview with Marshall Fogel from Sports Card Investor, you can see on his 1915 Cracker Jack Honus Wagner, the Mike Baker Black Diamond sticker. And interesting enough, um, his mantle in the video doesn't show the sticker, even though he talks about how it's the Black Diamond. Uh, very interesting that it's not shown in the video uh, with Sports Card Investor. I don't know why, um, unless it's just old photos, but, you know, Marshall Fogel is definitely someone who supports Mike Baker uh, Authentics and the stickers. So what is this all about? So um, I went to Mike Baker's website, looked at what he says about Mike Baker, and we're going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to talk about sort of what it is, and then we'll go into who kind of Mike Baker was. But first off here, you know, he talks about, and there's some contradictions here that need to be talked about. One is that we offer a certification service of high-end graded products from PSA, SGC, and BGS. Um, and then he just, a bunch of mumbo-jumbo marketing language here about commitment and passion, creativity, rapid communication. I mean, these are all just puffery. Don't really tell you what they're doing. Um their relationship to major auction houses is somehow important um, to growing their brand and whatever, whatever. So you're going to be able to sell the cards and auction easier is what they're kind of selling here. Uh, core values uh, uh, to provide a unique socially interactive environment for I mean, none of that's being done. Like there's no socially interactive environment with Mike Baker authentication. It's just a sticker on a card. Uh, there's no environment or socially interactive uh, thing at all. Uh, so that's very odd for them to say that. But the thing that's really interesting to hear is the mission. So in the mission statement, MBA is the brand of choice for individual collectors and businesses that seek the highest quality certification of high-end PSA cards. So, so wait a minute. You, you said you're doing this to SGC cards, BGS cards, and PSA, but in your mission statement, it's only PSA. So... What I glean from this is that um, being, again, someone who's worked in companies my whole life, that basically 
a lot of this language was used to launch the company to get investors to get people to um you know or for pitches and it's a mishmash of probably multiple versions of these statements and someone didn't proofread it and realize that they're only talking about PSA cards in their mission statement. But it's just this poorly edited and written um, statement here that's very prevalent on their website, meaning that it's they didn't spend a lot of time proofreading, creating uh, things that are meaningful um, on their website to tell you what Mike Baker does, what what is this all about and i'll get into that in a minute when i talk about their grading standards but let's go into mike baker and why this poorly written website is indicative of sort of the mike baker experience um, in terms of running a business and i'm not going to say anything about mike baker as a grader because a lot of people and, and including marshall fogo think he was a great grader but as a businessman and as someone who is running a company, I think he's left a lot to desire. So let's just start with the fact that he started GAI, which is now a defunct grader, uh, grading company that started with two former PSA employees, including Mike Baker. Um, so if you get into some of the history of GAI, you get articles like here is a, a blog post from Junk Wax, um, observations, good article here where he talks about um, GAI went bankrupt in 2008 and 2009. Um, again, talking about just a lot of competition with PSA, SGC, and Beckett. Um, and that Mike Baker, um, during the split up, purchased assets and formed a new company called Global Authority. And um, so Mike Baker, the new part owner of Global Authority, uh, was listed on the bankruptcy petition as a second of the unsecured creditors. Uh, so again, he purchased assets, right? And, you know, again, GAI was started in 2001 and 2002 by Steve Roche, Roche, um, sorry, um, who was, you know, former PSA uh, president, um, I believe, and um, Mike Baker, former head grader. So that's the two PS, uh, two employees uh, that left to form GAI. Now, um, you know, again, early on, there was good acceptance of GAI, but things started to fall apart. There was a lot um, of things that um, the industry or the people who were submitting to them uh, complained about. And the, a lot of it was to do with things like lost cards, um, grading cards that shouldn't have been graded. Now, their biggest innovation was they were the first pack grader in the hobby. So that was their big claim to fame was they created uh, pack grading. So again, GI definitely had some of uh, innovation in their, um, you know, in their services. But when PSA again came out with pack grading in 2006, it sort of really hurt their business. And again, you know, between the financial markets kind of crashing in 2008, more competition, and uh, they filed for bankruptcy. And then um, they rebranded in Iowa with Mike Baker basically being the director of grading authentication. They offered free grading. Um, so basically, you only graded the cards that got the grade you wanted. And people flooded them with tons of submissions. And if you read here, it says that basically they sunk under the uh, swarm of cards they were receiving. Plus, they lost cards. People didn't get their you know um, cards sent back to them after they went bankrupt. Uh, so there's a lot of things wrong with what happened. Um, so, and again, there's multiple articles. So this is just another one about global, global authentication, you know, basically shutting down. Um, you know, basically going bankrupt, not paying the rent. Um, you know, where are the submissions being held? Why are people not getting their cards back to them? Um, here's another one again about, you know, GAI reappearing as Global Authentics under Mike Baker. Um, you know, and, and again, 
You know, there, Mike Baker can see there was money issues with his former employer. Instances where promises were made to reach goals that caused some of the negativity that plagued in the past. And, you know, just basically bad at running business. So that is the tale of, you know, Mike Baker from running a business perspective. You get into this other issue, which was, you know, GI, which was, again, you know, Mike Baker was their head grader, grading cards um, that shouldn't have ever been graded. And the one thing I know a lot about, because I had a few of these cards um, graded by them or purchased from them um, or, or graded by them and purchased, was these 55 Bowmans. And you can, you know, this uh, post on Net54 by Mark S., um, you can go on PSA's forums. There's multiple posts and, and uh, threads about 55 Bowman's created by uh, GAI. And these cards were trimmed, re-glossed. Um, um, they had back creases that were spooned out. Just a lot of shenanigans going on with these cards. Um, so... GI should have never graded these cards and they graded a lot of them. So it really hurt people like uh, Mark here, who was trying to build sets, was buying GAI cards because he thought, you know, with Mike Baker, they were real. They were actually good cards and they turned out to be wrong cards, right? Uh, they used, they turned out to be trimmed, altered, and whatever. So that's Mike Baker. So that's, the, the, that's one of the reasons that I think it's very interesting for me that Mike Baker is still sort of in this position of being trusted and given uh, money to, to determine, you know, how nice sports cards are because of these issues in the past where he graded, you know, fakes and he graded uh, cards that were trimmed and recolored. Um, fake packs were quite prevalent in G GAI holders uh, at some point. So, it is a it is with a lot of trepidation that I would again trust um, this person with my high end sports cards, um, knowing that in the past they've been you know, lost, um, and uh, maybe maybe you get restitution, maybe you don't. Um, it's a little spotty on that history, and the fact that you know this person um, you know was never someone that. In my opinion, you know, got over, you know, GAI. GAI went bankrupt. And so he has this giant failure on his resume in the hobby. To me, that, like, doesn't really deserve, again, another shot. But, you know, I will say this, is that people like Marshall Fogel and a lot of collectors really trust and respect Mike Baker and his opinion, which is why he's doing this, why he gets business, right? So, you know, I think it's it's complicated um, when you get down to collectors and what they love and trust. And he was one of the original OG PSA graders. So I think that holds a lot of weight with these old school collectors like Marshall Fogel. So getting back to the whole um, actual grading standards from uh, GAI, or sorry, GAI, Mike Baker authenticate, Authenticated, so MBA. Um, so if you look at certification standards, right, this is where, again, it's just really tough for me to look at this and say that this is serious. Because if you're going to create standards and specifications, you have to be specific. You have to, you know, have some, some details here that are um, more than what's here, right? So a black diamond can only be given out to a card that's already been graded by PSA, SGC, and BGS. So... From that perspective, they're not doing anything other than grading a card that's already been graded. So let's just get that off, you know, the the the, the plate there. Yeah, they have these certification procedures here, where they go through this ten point checklist of authentication and blah blah blah. But I have not heard of anyone who's had a card rejected by Mike Baker as being uh, not authentic. So if someone has a story or can tell me about that, that'd be great because, for what I understand, they're just grading the grade. Uh, card that's already been graded and they, they, they don't really put a lot of effort into authentication because the card's already slabbed. It's very difficult to tell authentication once it's in the slab. Um, so the pristine 10 black diamond grade for Mike Baker um, means that it has to be 50-50 on the front 
and no more than 6040 on the back. Now, if you read it, it says, it is a pristine card with attributes including four perfectly sharp corners, superior print quality, and image must be centered. So let's take those terms separately. Pristine card, what does that mean? There has to be more than just pristine card. That's not a definition. That's not a standard. It's not something that can be measured. Four perfectly sharp corners. Again, there's things such as angles, and there's things that you could put there as a measurement. Um, but perfectly sharp corners seems a little vague. Um, in my in my opinion, on, on grading of a corner, there's a lot of things to look at. But perfectly sharp corners. Again, what if the card has rounded corners, right? There's cards that exist that don't have sharp corners that are normal. And superior print quality is, again, just puffery. What is superior? What does that mean? There has to be more to this than just that. So again, these are their standards. These are what they've printed. So it's a little bit vague. It's even more vague when you get down to like the gold. It's virtually perfect with attributes including four perfectly sharp corners Superior print, but an allowance might be made for slight printing imperfections. And what do they mean by printing imperfections? They should have a list of what they mean by that. And like, is five print dots too many or is four? They don't really list it here because they want to have the ability to just basically make it up as they go. Which a lot of great companies do. But this is why this is vague, right? And then you can go down the list and everyone has a slightly different variation to it. Um... But the one thing that I will say when I get down to their, um, you know, and then that we should all remember here, um, when you go to, to think about Mike Baker is that, um, you know, he only awards stickers to PSA, SGC, and BGS cards. Uh, he does not award cards to cards that he graded in the past, like GAI cards. You would think that that would be something that he would do. Um, you know, grade cards that he graded or, you know, authenticate cards and award stickers to cards that he previously graded, like GAI cards. So I think it's very telling that they're not listed here as one of the approved holders that he will give a sticker to. So, so moving on to does Mike Baker authenticated uh, stickers add value? So let's look at the numbers here. Hold on one second. All right, so I've got some numbers here I pulled up. So I've got PSA and SGC separated. Top is PSA. So I would normally make a big slide, but, you know, um, and make it, you know, somewhat um, more easy to read, maybe some charts. But I think this is good enough to just to get the general feel here. In general, if you go to VCP, and I use VCP average, um, and I looked at kind of the highest sell in the last year, or the highest sell from previous. So mostly I could find a sale from the last year, the highest. And if you look at it, um, on average, on a PSA card that has a Mike Baker Gold, because I did not find a single instance of a vintage card, and I only looked at vintage cards because modern cards are a little different. I'll talk about that. But on the vintage cards, I can only find sales of gold, uh, gold stickers, and or silver stickers. And in general, they sold for about 10% more than VCP average or the average price of what the card normally brings, right? And But if you go back to the highest sale in the last 20, you know, 12 months, only one time was the Mike Baker card uh, or a Mike Baker sticker card the highest sell. And that was for the 57 Tops Eddie Matthews PSA 8. Um, in all other cases, another card sold higher than the Mike Baker uh, sticker card. And these were all non-Mike Baker. I, I checked in the VCP. I looked at the cards um, through the app or through the, the website, and none of them were stickered. So these were all just regular graded cards with no extra stickers uh, on them that brought more money than the Mike Baker because you would assume that if the Mike Baker sticker made it the best of the best, then that card should always bring the highest sell whenever it goes to sell. Now it does, in, in a lot of cases, bring more money on average around 10%. But if you look at the delta from the yearly high, you know, on average, a Mike Baker card sells, you know, 26.4% below what the highest 
um, cards sold for within that year. So it's showing you that the Mike Baker card doesn't you know, sticker doesn't guarantee you, you know, that that card is going to bring the be the most money uh, that that card has ever sold for in that grade. So people aren't looking at that like saying like, hey, it's got a Mike Baker gold. I'm going to you know, pay the most money for this card because it's the top 1% of the 1%. That's not what's happening. It might get a slight premium, which again is around 10% over, uh, let's say, all other cards, all, you know, everything averaged together, but they don't bring top dollar every time. If you go down to SGC, I only found uh, four cards and the delta there from VCP was a little bit higher at 12%. But compared to the highest price, again, it was about 24% lower um, than the highest price. But in this case, two cards were the highest price sold. But that's also due to the fact that there wasn't a high volume in those cards. So it's just, you know, the SGC cards don't sell quite as often as PSA. Um, so what I'd leave you with this is that, yes, the Mike Baker sticker, on average, if you just want to compare all sales, will get you on average a little bit more premium but it won't get you the highest price ever sold um, just because it's a mike baker sticker secondly is they're basing almost all of their uh, criteria on centering so if you read those standards again it's mostly about centering that's something every collector can use their own eyeballs to do on their own so you don't really need a mike baker sticker to tell you if a card's 50 50. And I feel like it's a little insulting if that's really the majority of what they're doing. It's just sorting cards based on eye appeal, based on centering. Because every one of us can do that on our own. We don't need a third party to do that. So in the end, is it worth it? If you know you just took your entire collection and got a Mike Baker sticker on it, and, and you had some golds, and you know, maybe you got a black diamond or whatever, you know, I can't say no from a value perspective. From a nuisance, time consumption, and just overall silliness, I still feel like it's not a value-added service that I would use. But I could see if you're someone trying to say, I have the best of the best and I want more money for it, I could see someone doing that. That's my take. Let me know what you think, guys, and I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.